Poirier's come out. He said he relishes the target that it on, is on his back, and he's going to just sit out for a little bit until the right opportunity emerges. So I want to ask you guys a question. Is he handling that right? It sounds like he's taking his oars out of the water. Is he handling that right? Should he just sit back with the target on his back? Realize something great is going to happen. Realize that he now qualifies for a title fight. It's going to be a title. So whoever. Or should he look at it a little bit more strategically? Attempt to manipulate his own career a bit. Find the right opponent. If so, what is the right opponent? Somebody he can beat? Or is it what looks best for his wallet? It's a tough spot. Right, If you're going to go fight for a world championship, when your phone rings, you largely have to say yes. In fact, let's reword that. The right thing to do is to say yes. If we as the audience found out that you didn't, we're not going to want you fighting for a world championship. We're going to have a big problem with that, and we should. So you need to manipulate that board and influence whoever it is is going to make that phone call to you to be offering you what it is you want to be offered ahead of time. Or don't. You could do that too. You could do that too. But these are your options. It sounds as though Poirier is just going to step out. I think the Poirier is in a very fun spot. And the, the game of chess that he's going through is rather straightforward. We are down to Connor and Nate. With the information that we have now, with the press conferences and the media and the headlines and the interest and intrigue by the fans, we're down to two, Connor and Nate, in that order. And Nate was pretty hot, but Nate doesn't always understand how hot he is. If Nate really wanted that fight, he could get that fight to happen. He just needs to speak louder and more often than Connor. Tough one you're competing against. Connor's not afraid to get a bullhorn and go on top of a skyscraper if that's what it takes to be heard. Tough guy to compete with, but that's all that Nate would have to do. Nate made one comment on Twitter and controlled the headlines for a week, but that was a week ago. And now he's back to being quiet. I still feel with what we know right now, that's the order that we're in. Connor and Nate. Let's say I'm right, and let's say that it stays that way, and let's say that Nate speaks up a little bit and keeps his name in there. If you're Poirier and you have to choose between those two right now, the right choice, if you're given it, the right choice is Nate. And the reason it's Nate not only is for the parody, okay? But we talk about this a lot. Whatever a guy brings into the ring, it's all on the line. All chips are in. If you've had an okay career and this guy brings a world championship into the ring, you have a chance to leave as the world champion, even though you only had an okay career. Ruiz did it to that, that Anthony, Anthony Joshua, by example, for a recent combat example where all chips are in at all times. I bring that to you because Poirier and Nate both have a major mega million box office draw ace up their sleeves that they can throw on the table at any time. And that is a trilogy with Conor McGregor. I do not believe that Conor McGregor is going to go fight both of those guys at any point in his career. So that would be what's on the line. And that's also why it's, it's important that Poirier, if he was to position and he's looking at what is best for the bottom line, needs to go after Nate now because the Conor trilogy always works. Connor versus Nate trilogy works. Do you guys agree? Yes. Unanimously, you just agreed with me. Okay. Those guys haven't been in the ring with each other in three years. It might be four. But a moment ago, you all just agreed. It still works. So my point is, if Dustin is looking for what's next, go after Nate. Beat Nate. Earn the fact that your trilogy with Connor is now the one that matters. Fight Connor after that or fight him five fights from now. What Nate is going to bring to the table is the same thing that you're bringing in, which is who gets the trilogy. Now, if you think that, oh, well, Chael, what are you saying? Poirier could have the trilogy with Connor right now. Connor's asking for it. I agree with you. I get that. What I'm suggesting for you is a way to get two fights. What's better than a payday? Two paydays. 
And it's going to take the right finesse, but either one is. Connor fighting for a belt right now is so problematic that a guy within the division, Justin Gaethje, you said, man, I might even leave the division. I'd be so disgusted. Just to prove the point, it's problematic. How do you put a guy who just got not only KO'd, he, he, he didn't, didn't win a minute of a fight, lost the only completed round and got finished and could barely walk out. How do you put him in a title fight? Well, pretty easy to do. It's going to take a little finesse, but it's pretty easy to do. But you're faced with the same situation with Nate. Nate's story is a little different in that his last fight was a title fight. There was a controversial stoppage, and by the way, it was up a weight class. Just a little easier sell, in my opinion. For the way I would package and present it, I would have an easier time, me, Chael, personally, would have an easier time with Nate. Now, if Poirier sits around and does nothing, he could end up with anybody. I don't know that Poirier gives a damn. And I don't know that Poirier is going to have a problem. His next fight's going to be for a world championship. I think that the odds makers are going to believe he's going to leave with said championship, no matter who the opponent is. But that doesn't mean that one isn't more attractive than another, particularly if you're playing chess. If you're playing checkers, it's what's next. If you're playing chess and you're trying to look two and three ahead, you got this target on your back. You've got some options. But once that phone call comes, that means the decision was made on the second floor in Las Vegas. So the game right now is to manipulate the decision makers through the audience and through the media so that when they make that phone call, they're offering you the match that you wanted anyway. That's the game. Very few people play it, and I, I don't know that Dustin is, but Dustin's in a really cool spot. Snoop Dogg once said, I'm never broke if you owe me 20 grand. Well, the same is true in fighting. You're never done if you got that ace up your sleeve. And this is a business that nobody wants to be done with. You will wake up one day and the business is done with you. So the guys that have that pocketed, that can throw it on the table, by example, a Connor trilogy, they can throw that on the table anytime, are in a very unique position. Because as great as Dustin is skill for skill, his time will come when he's not just happened to Connor. It happens to us all. You wake up one day and all of a sudden you're not, the, it's just different. So much like anybody that has a job, all of you, doing a good job today is important. It's not as important as having a job to come back to tomorrow. That is the most important thing. And this business doesn't work that way unless you have an ace in your hole, right? Poirier's got it now. A good player is not going to play the one card up his sleeve until he has to play it, which is where kicking the can on the Connor fight starts to be something that Poirier should be at least a level of interested in doing without looking like a chicken and without hurting the fans and giving them something that they don't want, which is where Nate Diaz comes in. 